Hi everyone and welcome to your weekly energy update, a general tarot guidance taking a look at how the astral energies are likely to influence our lives over the course of the week. Before I begin the reading, I would just like to wish every single woman, female out there, very happy International Women's Day. May the whole world, even the divine and the whole universe, bow before the sacred feminine alive inside of you. And thank you so very much for providing our world with your female care, nurture, and ultimately, in a very physical and down-to-earth way, you are the source of life. So may the whole cosmos celebrate your femininity on this very special day. Now for the overall energies of the week, we have the chariot and the nine of water, which in classic tarot is the nine of cups. This is really, really suggestive because we have such a highly concentrated energy in the sign of Pisces, even now as we speak, not to mention by the end of the week, we're going to be having the sun, the moon, as in a new moon, Venus and Neptune conjunct together in the sky, in the deeply mystical, watery and feminine sign of Pisces, so without a shadow of a doubt, all of us personally, but maybe also collectively, we are definitely going to have that nine of cups moments in our lives. And what this means is being connected to the source, being able to observe witness of our own spirituality, of our own beliefs, the divine creative source alive inside of us, manifest one way or another in our lives. And the chariot is also extremely complementary because once we know our truth, once we can see the self for what it is, and ultimately, you know, life is an illusion. Life is never ever pure, objective, down-to-earth truth. There is always going to be at least a small element of illusion, what they say, the Maya, the great appearance and the illusion very many times depends mostly on us, our perceptions, our life philosophies, our faith, and of course, our conditioned self. And this means that this is one of those moments of the year, but it is also a very rare astrological moment because it's not just a classic Pisces season. It is the sun, the moon, Venus and Neptune conjunct together. And that is almost like a boom of psychological and spiritual energy. And that is almost like the universe uh, inviting us to jump into the deep water dive into the illusion of life, of existence, of our own subjective selves as much as we can, because there is truth there. Yes, it is our own personal subjective truth, what our soul, what our spirit, and ultimately even what our identity, the ego, wants to see. But that is power, because what we see inside, we create and project outside, and that is one of the forces which moves the chariot. That is one of the forces which carries the chariot. And in this oracle deck, which I have used for this reading called Gayantero, the chariot is depicted as a canoe. And what a beautiful symbolism, because it means that a part of the movement depends on us, how we paddle and the sense of direction. But another part is the river carrying us with it, you know, going with the flow, riding the tides of fate, of destiny. So it is life and reality being co-created with the divine, especially right now. So towards the end of the week, when we are going to have all of those planets in one spot in the sign of Pisces, that is almost going to feel like 
the divine stepping into our lives from within, of course, and taking away that sheet of paper on which we are writing our life stories in the eternal present, in the now, and replacing it with a big canvas and giving us a palette of colors, paintbrush and everything, and telling us we are ready to go to the next level where it's not just words and linking together phrases, but this is our opportunity to be the artist, to paint, to express our deepest divine spark through colors and through basically altered state of consciousness. And what I have said until this moment, it is quite literal, to be taken in quite a literal sense for everyone out there who is an artist or has any kind of creative self-expression, regardless of what that is, may it be painting music, or even if you're just a dreamer, if you meditate, if you're into spirituality, anything that has anything to do with the Piscean expression, well, this is truly your time to shine and do whatever it takes to use this blessing, this energy, the way you want it. So this period is actually very, very good to get that ch chariot, the canoe, moving into the direction where we want it to move. So for some people, that means healing. That means regeneration. Being able to finally, after a lot of years, to see more clearly what happiness means for them personally. What makes their soul happy? What makes this inner child, this divine artist inside of us resonate with life and existence and, you know, going through, swimming through the eternal now with greater ease and joy and just to live the adventure of life. But for other people, this energy can tur be turned into something like, let's say, material, where they have to advance in their careers, finances, make a move, make a decision, a choice. And this psychological empowerment and just knowing what makes you happy, what resonates with you, can help you, empower you, not to fear making that choice or giving all your strength, all your focus, all your attention towards achieving progress. You know, when the divine is this much alive inside of us, believing in ourselves and ignoring everything else comes with great, great ease. Because ultimately, that nine of cups, the nine of water, reminds us that we are not separate from the divine. We are living, breathing organs of the divine. If the universe is a huge, let's say, brain, if the universe is like a huge neural connection network, then we are just organs of it, and naturally, every living being desires its own well-being. It desires its own harmony and happiness, etc. And the universe is no different. The divine consciousness and mind is no different. It wants to be happy. It wants to be whole. It wants to exist in harmony with itself. And since we are not separate from that, we just mirror that. And that is why this is such a really good energy. Now, of course, on the other hand, the Nine of Cups, the Nine of Water, can also represent a very profound psychological purge. But ultimately, if we want to be happy, if we want to know crystal clearly and see it and feel it, what makes us truly happy, what matters to our souls, then we have to get rid of everything that is against that. And that means painful memories, that means traumas, that means hurts, pains, or wherever we are not able to forgive a person, we are not able to forgive ourselves, an action of ours. So yes, naturally for some people this is going to be like a doomy and gloomy period, but just be aware and know that this is like the divine inside of you regenerating itself and just, ex excuse my expression, vomiting out the poison, the toxin, and just showing you 
everything that is not you, showing you everything that you were conditioned with, showing you the toxic part of the illusion. But since everything is an illusion, you can work with it, you can alchemize it, you can transform it. So even if you're someone who is going through a depressive episode, who is being bombarded by anxiety, overthinking all these memories of the past, especially the painful ones, or quite contrary, maybe it doesn't source necessarily from the past, Venus in the sign of Pisces can also be desires, very, very strong soul-level desires, which you weren't... Be- weren't able to experience and live uh, until this present moment, so you feel a big void in your heart. If that is what you're experiencing, well, don't worry, because this energy can also make you attractive, as in even attract the hand of faith, even attract karma, even attract the flow into your life. Just look at that canoe. It's on the river, So the forward movement, it's guaranteed. Even if you don't paddle, you still end up somewhere. And that paddle and the control of the canoeer, I'm not sure that I used the correct word for this, but anyway, you get what I mean. That control is only to keep the balance, the speed, to make him feel safe. But other than that, the river still takes him where the river wants to take him. So do not fear the purges, neither do not fear if you're overwhelmed by this feeling of being incomplete, of not having your biggest dreams lived and experienced, because this time the void just makes you attracted that much more. It's almost like a black hole has an infinitely strong gravitational pull much stronger than even the most massive stars. So what I'm trying to say here is that even a void has a purpose and even a void is a very strong force, a power, both internally and also in the physical cosmos as well. Now, collectively speaking, what these cards may suggest is that some kind of truth is going to be revealed on the world stage, and the chariot can also have a scientific aspect to it, because the chariot can also represent our immune system, it can also represent the blood chemistry, and that is a theme that has been playing out in our lives for the past year and a half almost, so any progress with that is a good news. But the downside of this energy is that Nine of Cups, it is highly susceptible to misinterpretation. Let's not forget that we are going to perceive that very subjectively. And for certain people, especially those who are manipulative, those who know exactly that life is an illusion, and just how the human psyche is vulnerable to suggestions, Well, those people are definitely going to turn this to their advantage and start further conspiracies, riots, and just try to manipulate people, try to weave fear or hysteria and stuff like that into the collective. So, you know, this chariot can also represent their triumph, but only in this present moment. You know, the sky doesn't take sides. The sky just offers an energy, a possibility, and everyone uses it for their own purposes, according to their own principles, their own morality. So, you know, some people are definitely going to use this in a very unorthodox way, and it is what it is. That is why we need to focus on ourselves and stay detached, because the Nine of Cups personally represents that we are responsible for our own happiness, and happiness can be found inside of us and not that much outside. So if something unsettles us, if something upsets us, or if we can see the manipulation tendencies, just shut it out and use the beneficial part of ignorance. 
Yes, sometimes ignorance is bliss, especially when you're shutting out things which just have nothing really to do with you, things which you cannot change anyway, and greater awareness will just lead to greater pain. So there are some things which we have to shut out from our lives. Now for the guidance, we have the Four of Earth and the Star card. The Four of Earth is Four of Coins in the Classic Tarot. Now this message couldn't be more simple. It couldn't be more straightforward. What it means is, if there ever was a time to focus on ourselves, to focus on our happiness, to focus on our hopes and dreams and goals, To focus on building the future that we want to experience, that time is now. And it also has a material element to it, which means it's time to make decisions, it's time to sign that contract, it's time to get that new job, it's time to take physical action or legal action or even intellectual action, which can influence our material lives. Or the time has come not to just contemplate but also create express yourself once again i must say a fantastic energy for artists and everyone who has to do with spirituality the soul as in psychologist uh parapsychologist healers therapists you know you get the picture and another side to this guidance is also when we need some kind of help in our lives especially those things that don't really depend on us and or we don't have power over them this can also be a period of karmic harvest when the universe just offers us help guides us or enables us to have our way to have our will one way or another for some people it can be small gestures it can be small manifestations small moments of good fortune or being at the right place at the right time but for others it can be massive It can be like really big. The star can also be your wildest dreams appearing in physical reality before your very eyes. But of course, four of coins, you had to work for it. You had to sacrifice for it. You had to wait for it. And you just had to believe in it with all your heart and every fiber of your being. Now the other part, the last part, is what the universe advises us against. And this is also very clear. We have this Eight of Water, which is the Eight of Cups in Classic Tarot. What this means is escapism. So, you know, any Pisces season, especially if Venus is included in the picture, that can mean like a soul-level desire for escapist tendencies. Escapism can mean substances, alcohol, drugs... Games, computer games, fantasy, fiction, um, sexual um, games and fantasies and fetishes. So everything that has to do with escapism. So there will be a very strong urge and desire to enact everything that means escapism for you personally. And while there is nothing wrong with it, because it is a source of inspiration... And it can help you cope with like stress, anxiety, etc. But if it's substances, if it's like physical, be very, very careful not to exceed the measure. Be very, very careful not to drown in these escapist vibes. Because if taken with measure and used as a means to have an altered state of consciousness, for example, to be more optimistic, to be more dreamy, or to help you meditate, help you relax, help you sleep, not to overthink as much, not to fear, you know, the everyday problems that we have. It can be quite beneficial, but if used in excess, or if used for sheer sake of pleasure... It can be quite dangerous under the sky with this Neptune moon, Venus and the sun conjunct together. It can be even lethal, so be very, very careful not to exceed the measure. And another side of this, 
you know, fantasy and illusion, everything that I have spoken about in this reading is a source of divine creativity, but be careful what you believe. Be very, very careful what power you give to the illusion, because every high has a low, even if it's not a substance, even if it's not escapism, even if it's something purely spiritual of nature, even if it's faith and belief and whatever it is that we think the divine is communicating to us, be very careful how much power you give to that. Because even with the strong Neptune and all the planets in Pisces, now let's be honest with ourselves, the universe will never allow a manifestation which goes against the rules of nature in a destructive way. And yet another advice is this three of earth, which in tarot is the three of coins. Now, this might suggest that we might get one of the expressions of Mars in Gemini, which is an overflow of communication. Now, if you are a specialist in anything, it doesn't matter what domain it is, be careful because your life might all of a sudden be flooded by requests, by communication, by offers, by work, by opportunities, everything which has to do with your professional life. And even though, of course it means money, of course it means income, of course it means professional evolution, but if you say yes to everything, well, you can tire yourself out, you can exhaust yourself in such a way that you might be working to your ultimate burnout and nothing good will going to come from this prosperity of communication offers and interhuman connections. So, you know, know your limits, know how much you can do and know that you also need time for yourself to rest, to regenerate, to especially physically, especially your body, your mind, your brain. Because even the creative energies are not infinite. Even the soul has to be nurtured. The brain, the physical brain and our neural system has to be nurtured and looked after. So even though opportunities, communication, business, clients, offers, collaborations, the abundance of this is like something all of us need in our lives and it's something ultimately very positive because so very many people have suffered because of this COVID situation and the restrictions and it closed down so many businesses so everyone is a little bit like desperate to get things moving to have more business to have more work to have more production but, you know, you still have to be careful not to get overwhelmed. And that is why you need to know your limits. If you say yes to everything, especially under these Neptunian energies, you can quickly go to a burnout in a flash, in an instant. And also, this three of coins can also represent that self-care, time spent with yourself, and mostly physical activities like healthy eating, exercise, rest. Or if you're a parent spending time with your children, that is absolutely essential. So do not sacrifice time spent with yourself and time that you dedicate for your physical well-being or for those people who are very, very important in your life. And at the same time, this three of coins can also suggest that some of us are going through some kind of detox, psychological detox, where we might just refuse to watch movies, Netflix, etc. and just free our psyches from external fantasy. Other people might be detoxing diet-wise, other people might be trying to quit addictions, etc. Which automatically means that, of course, there are, are going to be moments when you're just stressed and anxious and angry and irrational and so very agitated and frustrated without any logical explanation. 
Well, that is withdrawal symptom, regardless of what detox you're performing in your life. So be patient with yourself and know that there is a physical consequence to it. So don't interpret it for anything else. Just know that your body is adapting, you are cleansing, but there's also mental and psychological discomfort in this picture. So don't be afraid, don't panic and just take it as it is. It is a necessary pain. It will definitely lead to a greater good. So this concludes today's reading. I do hope that you enjoyed it and you found it useful. And thank you so much for everyone's support. Thank you for listening to my work. And thank you for your donations. If you'd like to support my work and my channel, there is a PayPal link in the description below. And finally, I would like to wish all women and females a very, very happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Until next time, bye for now.